The new U.S. Supreme Court session begins every year on the first Monday in October. So we've invited Rod Smola, the new dean of the Widener University Delaware Law School, for some perspective. Thanks for being here, Rod. Good Appreciate to be with you, Mark. Uh, so the calendar is already set. Uh, what's kind of the, the high-profile case? What's going to get the attention? Yeah, you know, the way the court works is it announces a number of cases as the term starts, and then it adds cases as it goes along. So we may still find some exciting cases that get, ex that get accepted down the road. Right now, I think the most interesting case on the court's calendar is a challenge to affirmative action in higher education. It's a case that the court will be hearing for the second time. It's called Fisher versus Texas, and it involves the question of the extent to which universities are going to be able to continue to use race and ethnicity in making their admissions decisions. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see a, a dramatic cutback and the courts say either you can no longer use race and ethnicity at all or you can use it but in a very limited way. You can only use it to, to diversify your student body if you've exhausted every other conceivable way to achieve diversity and you meet a very heavy burden of proving it's the only way to get there. So I think it'd be a very important case. It could have a profound effect on universities and colleges around the country. And uh, that's, that's in terms of the kind of culture wars that we always think about in the Supreme Court, probably the most significant case right now that we know is going to be heard in the fall. So, so unlike the past session, not quite as many unlike really big. unlike last year where we had Obamacare we had uh, the same-sex marriage decisions enormous de important decisions involving religious freedom at this stage there isn't that kind of, uh, of cultural uh, a case although if the court were to uh, abolish affirmative action or dramatically curtail it I think that would be uh, very important and particularly in light of the identity politics that we have in our country right now, and debates over immigration and, and ethnicity and so on, um, that could have an enormously important effect even on the presidential uh, race. And there's still a chance for something Obamacare, oh, Obamacare related, maybe Im even immigration. You never could know. Come up. Uh, absolutely. I mean, very, very often cases will percolate, and sometimes around the holidays or even in the, in the early spring, a court, the, the court will take an enormously important case, and uh, that'll suddenly be the spotlight. Uh, a lot of times we think of the Supreme Court sort of operating in a bubble, but uh, we can't ignore the fact that there is a presidential campaign uh, well underway now. Uh, does that have an impact on what cases the, the court will take no. that they don't want to get involved in this and maybe in a political year? You know, who knows? I don't, think, I don't know that, that it has an impact uh, on the court. I think the justices will do what they want to do. And I doubt a justice is going to avoid taking a case because they don't want to make a controversial ruling in the middle of a, Supreme, of a presidential race. But I think what happens in the reverse is as important cases get teed up and the cases that have been decided over the last few years are enormously important and any new case the court may take, that becomes fodder in the presidential race. And you certainly saw that in the Republican uh, debates. Uh, you saw a number of the Republican candidates really laying it on Chief Justice John Roberts as not being conservative enough and saying, you know, had it been my pick and not, not your brother, uh, Jeb Bush, right. uh, we wouldn't have John Roberts. Uh, may have been a little bit of a bum rap if you're a conservative. Uh, John Roberts has been a pretty stalwart conservative on the court, but he did uh, in two different occasions right to uphold the Affordable Care Act. And there are some folks uh, on that side of the aisle that will never forgive him for that. And, and there, there comes the conversation of I'll have this litmus test for whatever kind of justice I will, I will appoint should I That's become right. president. That's and, right. And of course, what we know is that you can have any litmus test you want, and it doesn't necessarily work out that way. So there have been many, many situations where Democratic uh, presidents thought they had reliably liberal Supreme Court justices, and they turned out not to necessarily be so. And certainly the reverse is also true, where you had Republican presidents appoint uh, justices, and they got confirmed by the Senate, thinking they would be stalwart conservatives, and they would either migrate toward the center, or in, or in sometimes the more liberal wings of the court. So it's by no means an exact science. People have a tendency to be very independent once they're on that court. Is that is that maybe the the, the, the litmus test of what a good judge is, not necessarily what a good what a presidential candidate would want, but somebody that regardless of their their leanings looks at the law and and judges it based on the Constitution. Right. You know, if you if it depends on who you ask. Now you ask me, uh, a lawyer who's litigated in the Supreme Court and uh, argues cases in front of judges all the time and who teaches constitutional law, I like someone with some independence. I like someone who says, I'm not, I'm not you know, in the United States Senate now. I'm not in the administration. My job is to listen to the arguments on both sides, think about it, follow my views as what the Constitution means, and try to call it as I see it. And I think most of the justices do that, but 
they see it in a lot of different ways, depending on uh, what their backgrounds are and what their views are about our about our Constitution. And then finally, personally, uh, you're new to new to Widener, new to the Delaware Law School uh, here. Uh, how have you been adjusting? And we understand you'll you'll be taking the Delaware bar. I'm going to take the Delaware bar exam. So ask me in a year how I'm, <laughs> how I'm doing. But you know, I love it here. I love the community. I love the general region. I'm delighted to be here. Happy to be part of the community. Happy to be doing things like this with you. And hope we do it a lot. All right. Well, we're glad to have you here. He is uh, Rod Small the new dean of the Widener University Delaware Law School. Thanks for being our first person this week on First. My pleasure. Thanks, Mark.